Hello bookworms and welcome back to my last video on my Spooktube series, the October series where I discuss my favorite horror novels. If you missed it, don't worry, because what are playlists for? I'll link the previous videos in this series in the eye corner. This? This? Somewhere around here. But for our finale, I chose to talk about The Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris. This is actually a sequel to the book Red Dragon, but not only you can read the series totally separately, I feel that due to the very famous movie adaptation, people know this one more, and many believe that this is actually the first book. Even though it's not even the first movie. The first movie adaptation was Red Dragon, but it was called Manhunter, and it came out in the 80s, but it wasn't as successful as the 90s movie of the sequel, and I mention it because, first off, the movie will be brought up again, and also because I think it's interesting. Anyway, let's ignore the movie for now and talk about the book The Silence of the Lambs. We follow Clarice Starling, an FBI trainee who's still at Quantico School, and she finds herself helping in an open investigation, the hunt for a serial killer dubbed Buffalo Bill, who murders and skins women. Quickly, Clarice and her FBI colleagues realize that there is one man who can help them with their investigation. The problem is that this man, psychiatrist Dr. Hannibal Lecter, is as intelligent as he is dangerous. A serial killer himself, Lecter is locked in a prison, but it doesn't make him any less intimidating. Clarice is tasked in picking his brain about Buffalo Bill, but it comes at a price, because Lecter will only help her if she will tell him about herself and reveal to him her greatest traumas. So let's get right to the point. This book is so good. Like all the other books on this series, I recently reread it for this video, and honestly, I just forgot how much of a fascinating page turner fast read it is. It's a psychological horror thriller, so if you want some scares but don't really relate to the supernatural, haunted house, demonic possession type of horror, this might be the book for you. Also, if you like smart thrillers, I often talk about cut and paste thrillers, these are not smart. Interesting character dynamics, truly horrific villains that you better believe are based on real people and you are not afraid of some blood, guts and gore, you should definitely read this book. It was just so interesting, things were happening in it all the time, there's not a dull moment even in the calmer parts when people are just talking. Harris somehow managed to perfectly balance deeper themes with action. This book never gets too boring, never gets too cheesy, never gets too heavy. It's truly a masterpiece. Now you might be th thinking, I sense a but coming, and you will be partially right. After raving about this book, and I definitely think it deserves the raving, I do want to go back to its movie adaptation, which I've seen prior to reading the book, as I'm sure many of you had. Because after rereading the book and rewatching the movie, because you bet I did, and you know, it's a masterpiece on its own, I have to say that despite the movie being an amazingly accurate adaptation to the book, there are actually things I prefer in the movie to the book. There aren't many differences between book to movie, but the big ones that I want to point out all have to do with the characters. To the book's credit, one of the things it did better is to go deeper into the heads of the characters. I'm not even going to talk about Crawford, who's almost a non-character in a the movie. They decided to cut most of him out, which is understandable. You can't put everything in an adaptation. In the movie, it was simply her boss, he sends her places and such, but in the book, he has a much bigger role. But the book does show us more of Buffalo Bill's perspective, which I found really interesting. We learn more about his past and his traumas and uh, what made him who he is. And I even found his relationship with both his victim and how he treated it and his dog Precious more interesting. In addition, we also see some scenes from his victim's point of view and we feel with her just how scared she is, how cold it is where she's held and how she tries to protect herself from her captor. It makes it a lot more impactful than just seeing her and hearing her pleads for help. 
However, where I feel the movie excels is with the characters of Clarice and Dr. Lecter. I found them and their relationship better in the movie. Or maybe better is the wrong word here, they're different, and I personally prefer the movie version of them. Lecter is a lot more psychologically intimidating in the movie, if that makes sense. He is physically strong and will kill whoever in a horrific ways, but in the book he comes across more of an arrogant asshole who just wants to play with everyone's minds. There's something to say about the fact that in the book it's clear that he really doesn't care about the victim and he just wants to see everyone jump when he says so, just for him eventually to say, no, sorry, I actually have no idea where she is. This is a plus for the book, but there is something just dangerously charming about the movie counterpart. Look, I know everyone has already said it before, but seriously guys, the casting of Sir Anthony Hopkins as Dr. Lecter was one of the best casting choices ever. And partially what made this movie what it is and what made Dr. Lecter in the movie who he was. But let's not forget about our heroine, Clarice. I also preferred her in the movie because she's truly a character who goes through trials and tribulations and grows from this nice, polite, apologetic wannabe to this kick-ass, accomplished FBI agent who showed this boys club and everybody else, especially herself, that she is smart and she's capable of catching the serial killer who eluded all these others, other big strong agents. There is so much more to say about this and I did discuss it uh, shortly in other videos which will be linked somewhere about me, but let's stick to the point. Book Clarice doesn't really go through the arc her movie counterpart does, which is such a shame. She also, she's a lot more, I don't know, bitter, fuck you kind of a person with anger issues and she's a lot more aggressive. She doesn't grow as much as a character. And also, not to spoil much, but Lecter in the book pretty much tells her straight up what Bill is going to do and what his endgame is while in the movie she figured it out all on her own. Sorry that this video became more of a movie comparison than a book review, but I think these points are relevant and come on, tell me you didn't at least hear of the movie if not seen it. But despite some elements that made me prefer the movie, this book is brilliant. This is a different kind of horror and I also like how in this spooktube series I had all kinds of uh, horror genres from a haunted house to a psychological horror and a fantasy because horror is such a diverse genre. And this concludes both this video and this Halloween series. I really enjoyed making these videos. The process of choosing which books to include, although I have to say a video a week was way too much for me. I have a day job and I like to take my time, wait after I read a book, think about it before forming an opinion, etc. So from now on, unless I become a full-time YouTuber, I think I'll stay with a video every other week. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to click the like button to show your support and subscribe to my channel if you dare. Also write down in the comment section if you read any book from the series. I read Hannibal and really disliked it, but Red Dragon is on my TBR. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, this copy has both books in it, so that's a plus. And yes, I've seen the movie Red Dragon. And if you're in a mood for more horror book reviews or just book-related videos in general, I linked some videos you might find interesting in the description box. So guys, again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.